First of all, good morning uh, to you, uh, uh, Dr. McCurdy, uh, Dr. Deshaun, and Dr. Gann. I just want to say thank you all uh, for allowing me to uh, sit before you and to defend today. I uh, want to also just thank you all for teaching me uh, throughout this journey, throughout the years, and uh, uh, helping me to learn and grow not only as um, a student, but also as a person and a minister of the gospel, and also as a military chaplain, pastor. So I want to say thank you all so very much, as well as Amridge uh, staff and faculty there. Um, um, so, all right, with that, I'd like to uh, get started. As you probably see, I, I hope you all can see uh, my uh, outline, and I want to also especially thank Dr. Gann, you, you've pushed me so much and I, I can't thank you enough. Um, you, you've helped me to really delve in and really grow academically and mentally um, to degrees that I never thought I could get to. Um, I'm, I'm just amazed um, by your expertise and your leadership. And she helped me craft his title, um, um, Clergy Burnout an investigation of pastors' experiences during burnout, a case study. And so um, with that, this is for the Doctor of Philosophy and in Interdisciplinary Studies as of today's day, July 30th, 2021. As I uh, look over our problem statement was this research, it, it, it seeks or rather it sought to 
address a lack of understanding of ministry experiences and emotions of pastors during the burnout phase. Because having served as a pastor, we all go through that. Um, I know Dr. Deshaun, you are a pastor, and um, I do recall you even sharing at one point that we all go through as pastors, we go through different periods where we become overwhelmed sometimes or we deal with uh, cases or stages of burnout due to how things um, operate um, sometimes under our leadership whether we expect them to or not in a, in a negative sense and so with that um, this problem as you also saw in my dissertation it it um, it, it seeks to understand how ministers um, of churches, how they deal with their experiences and their emotions while they pastor people. Um, although there has been a considerable amount of literature um, that is published and uh, academic peer-reviewed uh, literature as well as dissertations and some articles that are out in the World Wide Web and many other places, um, they speak to the issues of uh, pastoral burnout that clergy deal with. Um, it, pre it does frequently place us in the positions of uh, disappointment, especially when we believe that things are not working as we had envisioned, as I did quote that in the literature and that's very true. When I re would recall uh, my own life as a pastor, I began pastoring in um, 1999 upon coming out of the, of the Air Force after serving nine years. Um, I took over as a pastor of a small church in North Carolina, and then I uh, received my first master's degree through, well, at the time it was Southern Christian <laughs> University, and, then went on and received a Master of Divinity a little bit later as I took over a little bit larger church. Um, and coming back in the military serving as a chaplain, a military chaplain, which is a military pastor and pastoring congregations, regardless of the, the other uh, aspects of ministry that deal with um, the, as you can see, the emotional exhaustion, the job dissatisfaction, and the self-blame. Um, pastors are subject to pastoral burnout no matter what size of the church that they lead or pastor. Um, they, they, they deal with it sometimes without even realizing it. Um, they can deal with it even emotionally. They can deal with it physically, spiritually, and also in other areas. But I did know even in my research that research it has. It has observed why pastors endure it and why they deal with it. And these are some of the reasons why, um, as you can see also on my um, PowerPoint, why, especially uh, uh, an inability to meet budgetary and payroll requirements. When you're paying staff, um, not just musicians, of course, uh, but also when you're dealing with administrative staff members and when you look at what's coming in from an economic perspective and uh, things are not matching up and you're setting up so many different campaigns and you're, you're holding drives and it's, it's become a business. Uh, you, you, I hate to say it that way, but it's very true that serving as a pastor is not just pastoring and preaching and teaching. Uh, throughout uh, on a Sunday or throughout the week, but you're also you, you have to grow into the gifting of administration and leading a congregation of people and gaining that experience as a civilian uh, for several years prior to my coming onto active duty in 2010, coming back on active duty in the Air Force as a commission officer, it really helped me to grow and to learn who I was what um, I had the stamina, the patience and endurance to deal with and some things that I did not. And so uh, throughout those several years, almost six and a half years of pastoring on the outside, I learned 
um, what pastoral burnout was at that point in my life and my mid-30s. Um, it was very difficult. I blamed myself. I beat myself up. Um, having to uh, subject to myself to other uh, ministers of the gospel who would not only put me in check, but would help me to grow. And I was able to learn from their many examples and struggles of pain. There's many uh, examples of uh, mistakes that they've made. I was able to learn from them. I was able to grow from their many examples. And some made unfortunate, uh, unfortunate decisions um, and I was able to just watch and see how they um, got through those, whether good or bad. Some decisions that they made weren't so good, and some decisions they made were good, and I was able to grow and to uh, see their examples. But getting back to the inability at times um, to meet budgetary and payroll requirements was something that I endured, um, pastoring especially a very small church and the expectations that a community has of uh, churches to all of a sudden take off and boom, uh, a church plant especially, um, was very difficult in an established uh, city where the going thing at that time was music. And that's what attracted people to your church. If you had a, a big booming ministry, music ministry, if you, if you had all the the ruffles and flourishes, people were flocking to you, or if you had concerts all the time, those are the things that would um, make your church grow. And in, the, in a sense, as I go back sometimes and visit that community, that is still somewhat of the spirit of that area. And of course, I didn't come to that area to change that area, um, but I, I had to grow in um, I made some mistakes along the way. I did. I did, and I burned myself out, uh, having also worked as a bivocational pastor um, in my own in my old career field of logistics and management, uh, while managing a family as well as a church, and, and and helping kids, my own kids, to grow. They're all grown now and gone, but at the time it was very difficult to balance all of these things while at the same time uh, seeking to grow um, spiritually as well educationally so that I could be uh, fully equipped to lead as a pastor and to be a better pastor um, and not only the propagation of the gospel but also leading in my community. Um, and so I, I suffered a, a lot in terms of um, some decisions that I made that weren't the greatest and I didn't have some senior leaders or rather seasoned uh, elders in the gospel to guide me along the way in my own church. I at times wished that I had that, um, like, like a retired pastor who wanted to just help out, um, things like that. I, I really prayed for that. And once I pastored a church in Pennsylvania, things began to take off and do a, a little bit better uh, for me. And, and I was able to grow, but I, I still went through uh, some issues of even guilt of not making the right decision at the right time or being too hesitant to make the right decision. And so um, during this case study, uh, you'll learn a little bit later uh, how uh, these things can affect us when we even deal with the issues of guilt for not making decisions at the best times in our ministries or um, that unfortunately um, affects our families and our lives. And so um, when we deal with the emotional fatigue, the job dissatisfaction, the um, self-esteem issues that we deal with, um, the embarrassment, um, the culpability, which is the guilt, those things cause us during our emotional journeys at times to deal with burnout. Um, the purpose of our study was, or my study rather, was to gain an understanding of the way the clergy experience burnout 
and their emotional journey during the burnout. It's a mouthful, but it is definitely <laughs> a journey. Um, it's a journey that I look back and I'm so thankful uh, for because it's helped me to grow and it's also helped me to mentor and to pastor pastors, to, to lead pastors and helping them grow and to learn from the pitfalls of how burnout, if not properly dealt with in many different fashions, um, can really affect us long term. And it can cause a person to um, unfortunately gain a disinterest or rather have a disinterest in ministry. Uh, the purpose also, um, as you will learn the uh, interview questions, um, uh, I'm going to go over that in just a moment, but uh, I had uh, um, worked with eight different pastors who, and I'm thankful for Dr. Deshaun uh, um, suggesting during my, qualifi my qualifying exam that I should um, work with pastors in different fashions of uh, a church setting, not just all senior pastors, to gain a, a, a much more broader perspective of burnout at those levels of ministry. And so these eight pastors, they served as participants in um, my study, and they're full-time pastors, full-time pastors, and all of which have had three to five years of ministry experience. And uh, um, there were in-depth uh, interview questions, which I did ask, and I allotted for two hours, of which, um, to be honest with you, um, a great amount of time was, was taken, um, leading up to almost two hours for a few of them. So um, as many shared their, uh, their examples of um, their uh, experiences of burnout based off of decisions and their leadership and having lack of training, um, lack of um, uh, even study and, and uh, what they were dealing with. And some didn't even know what to study. They just knew they were dealing with uh, issues that caused them internal pains, internal um, embarrassment. Um, it caused them some sicknesses. And so uh, this was a very interesting study during my time. And so the purpose also was to, to also to provide a, um, a framework for understanding all of these pastors, their feelings, and all of their experiences of burnout, and to provide some suggested uh, steps to cope with burnout. Can y'all hear me well? Yeah. It's just a, mm -hmm. Everything is good. We just go ahead and, of course, as you're speaking, I am taking notes, but you are just welcome to just go ahead and, and just move right along. And I was also thinking, uh, I know you're still out in your profession right now as we speak, so if you wanted to just um, move a little faster in your wording or speak, oh, sure. I know, that sure. would be fine as well. Yes, ma'am. Um, okay. Way, because I know also with your position in the Air Force and being a military chaplain, you may have some other duties. Yes, so you're just welcome to, if you would like to just speed right along and just move right along and we can um, go ahead and continue. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, thank you so much. So as you see these research questions, I, I wanted to, inc to include this quote, burnout is a job related syndrome that's ca characterized by emotional exhaustion, lack of accomplishment and feelings that are disconnected from those one is working to support. Um, I was able to research why pastors experience burnout again as a result of emotional exhaustion, the job dissatisfaction, self-blame, and ability to meet um, budgetary payroll requirements as well as culpability. I do believe there is further research that is needed um, why pastors experience burnout and what they do to rejuvenate and resume their regular roles. And I have where I uh, pulled that information from. My three research questions were how do pastors describe their ministry experiences while within the burnout stage 
Number two, how do pastors describe their emotional journey during the burnout stage? And what resources and activities do pastors use during burnout or when facing an emotional strain? Thank you, Dr. Gann, for this one as well, similar to burnout. And um, so I was able to choose the, the research method and design was, of course, of a case study resigned of qualitative research and I sought to understand the people's or rather people's perceptions, um, the perceptives, the understandings of a particular situation or uh, uh, what, it, what it is they're dealing with by ascertaining from the shared pastoral experiences questions that were asked. And so uh, my um, participants or rather pastors um, consisted of eight pastors of different uh, leadership positions within a church and they were asked 10 questions. I allotted again two hours and which was more than enough time but I used almost all of that for a few again uh, pastors. And they were one-on-one -on -one interviews uh, which were very confidential for them in a safe place. All right, any questions so far? before I even move further. I will say also that um, it was, I did note as I uh, performed my uh, literature review that we are uh, many pastors, um, even in the military, uh, we are um, considered a low socioeconomic class of people um, who are basically carers for those who are in need. And um, we're not really viewed as folks who really need the help. We're there to help them. Um, we're there to help people. We're there to love them, to help them, to help them grow, to, to counsel, to lead, all these different things. But if we don't get the care that we need, we will definitely burn out. We will. Um, give up uh, without realizing it. We won't give our all and uh, counseling people will begin to form a disinterest over a period of time and being the best that we can be in terms of pastors, whether we're on the outside, which I'm very thankful for having served as a pastor outside of the military, but serving as a pastor inside of the military is the same. We just wear a military uniform and we deal with, it's a lot more structured, but it's still, it's a different world. But we deal with congregants who come to us with the same set of problems as though we are pastors on the outside. And if we uh, um, are not patient with ourselves, taking care of ourselves, um, not only spiritual, um, with our, you know, through spiritual health, uh, but also mental health and taking time to make time for ourselves, we will definitely burn out, especially if we don't take the time for our families that's needed. And I noted that quite a bit in my literature review, and I picked that up as well during uh, individual interviews from the uh, pastors that I was able to meet with. Many were very candid in what they shared in terms of their experiences of not taking the time that's needed because they devoted so much time to people that they neglected taking care of themselves, of which some um, of participants, their health has declined, unfortunately, greatly. Um, one has recently passed away within the last week, uh, one of the, my participants, and it's really uh, hurt me rather deeply on the inside, but, uh, but, uh, these are, uh, this is what many of us deal with in terms of um, not taking care of ourselves as we should, being there for everyone else, not taking care of ourselves. These things will come on us, unfortunately, meaning when I say these things, we will burn out if we're constantly giving out and not um, being deposited into. Dr. Thomas, I thank you um, for that statement. Great study. It is an informative study. Um, but one of the things I would also say, even in this study, 
we're looking at it from um, from clergy. Yes, ma'am. But this is a study that can be used in the field of counseling. Yes. Um, the field, I guess we say ministry, um, the field of education, because burnout truly is real. But I truly also understand that those of us that have that passion, um, burnout takes place because we also, let's say it, it doesn't affect us just physically, but mentally, spiritually, and emotionally as well. And it is not something that we can actually just put on just say Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. But it is also a calling. Yes. It is actually 24 7. Definitely. Um, as well. So when I was, of course, just reading and going through with my thoughts um, in the study, and even those, you know, just from the participants, just understanding that wanting to take the break and needing to take the break uh, due to burnout is necessary, but it's not always so, um, so easy. Uh, to do so, I know mm-hmm. you have that, of course, uh, in your uh, recommendations. What, of course, would be best and some good, some good ways that could help with, of course, that burnout. But I now wanted to see if your committee had any um, questions or anything that they wanted to, of course, to add or to address in regard to your study. All right, thank you, Dr. McCurdy. Uh, great job, Thomas. And I was just. Uh, I was looking at your I was looking at the your cover sheet there as I opened the file this morning and reminded I was reminded that it's been six years since you completed your uh, your DMIN degree uh, right, so with uh, I believe Dr. Shepherd and, and um, I, I know I served on that committee and I Dr. just Weaves. reflect on yes. how much you have uh, grown uh, academically at least uh, from I'm just talking about um, the quality of writing, quality of research, uh, you uh, certainly demonstrated uh, significant growth and uh, really appreciate your uh, your efforts. And you know, I, uh, several, uh, several items that were standing out, you know, that inability to meet budgetary and payroll requirements. I, um, you know, I, I'm thinking about my role as executive director of a nonprofit community counseling center, and there is nothing more painful mm-hmm. than to do budget cuts because it's not just money, but it's lives of real people. And, right. Um, you know, that's one of the most painful things I've had to do is is to uh, make changes on a personnel level as far as uh, now when the money is good and you add more counselors, you know, life is good, but uh, those uh, budgetary payroll uh, cuts are uh, very significant and one of the things that i'm thankful for from the my ministry perspective is being in a church that i don't i mean i have to i don't have to deal with the payroll and budget stuff we have other folks to do it but the the ministers that are pulling double duty not only preaching and teaching but also having to worry about budgetary payroll i mean that obviously is a is a is a major uh, concern and, and certainly leads uh, to uh, to burnout. So, um, how would you say? And I'm not necessarily looking for right or wrong uh, answers here, but uh, how would you say your the, the qualitative case study approach? Um, how did it? Did you feel that it, it it worked well? Are you are you glad you took that approach? Are you wishing you would have taken another methodology? How did that qualitative case study approach uh, work uh, for you uh, in conducting this research and and um, just now that this uh, product is finished. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sean. Um, you know, at first I uh, was striving and I, I, was, I was attempting rather to conduct a phenomenological uh, research, but through the uh, help of Dr. Gann as well as Dr. McCurdy, I was able to be redirected because of my goal of obtaining the results from the study um, and how I uh, organized uh, my research in terms of rather this dissertation, it was organized as such as a, as a case study. And so with my doing some reading and, and again uh, um, and some other aspects of research, it, it, it helped me to further understand that what I was doing was conducting a study basically case by case basis, understanding a phenomena from a different perspective and not just understanding, okay, just the experiences only, 
but understanding the individual cases of those who serve in those different positions. And um, when I say qualify, when I record those experiences of these individual cases, it helped me to organize better and it helped me to actually have an overall better view of what these pastors deal with individually in those individual calls of ministry, whether they're children's pastor, youth pastor, uh, associate pastor, system pastor for church, what have you. And so I was able to really tie in even the research and understand that uh, pastors of different echelons of ministry, regardless if they're a pastor or a minister rather, over a church or a, congrega a congregation of people, they all deal with um, burnout at different levels. Um, whether they and one of the cool things yes. about the case study approach is that it gives you an opportunity to, to dive deeper Absolutely. into a, a smaller sample and, and to get what many refer to as those thicker descriptions of of experiences and, and uh, I did feel as if you uh, were able to bring some of those out uh, in in your research. So, uh, you know, one of the things that I always try to encourage students to think about uh, after you, uh, you know, met, you, you know, now what? Okay, so now that you've finished this, uh, now what? I, I really do believe that you're going to be, in a, you are in a great position to help many people across several disciplines. I, uh, whether that's the, in the, the military chaplaincy world, whether that's in local ministry, or maybe even the nonprofit community right. um, as, as well. And, and these, uh, as Dr. McCurdy was saying earlier, uh, burnout is something that is uh, across the board in all disciplines. And yes. um, I, I know that this uh, research focused on uh, ministers, but uh, a lot of the similar dynamics uh, are uh, present. Uh, in the business world and the nonprofit world, yes. and, um, and it's uh, what I'm saying is you're going to, I believe, be in a position uh, to maybe do some consulting, maybe do some uh, helping uh, in that regard. So, uh, speaking of which, uh, let's suppose, uh, and this is uh, based on a true story here, uh, it's a true scenario. With, I mean, I'll change a couple of details, but uh, let's say you got a 58 year old uh, minister in a local church who's preaching. Uh, a few members have noticed some uh, bitterness, some resentment, uh, some snide remarks from, from the pulpit, uh, some other things happening. And the preacher goes to his church leadership and asks for, uh, uh, he asks for a break because he feels burned out and he feels unappreciated. And let's suppose you were called to be a consultant for those church leaders trying to figure out what are they going to do with this preacher who doesn't feel appreciated. What would you want those church leaders to know based on your research? Definitely to understand their um, the concern that this pastor um, has brought to them to you know as he's brought this to the leadership of this local church. Um, throughout even my own case study research, I, I, I've thoroughly enjoyed it much better to be honest. But but to really help the leadership to understand. Um, and even if he chooses not to disclose um, those issues of bitterness and, and other concerns that he's dealing with based off of his treatment of the members within that congregation, um, what I definitely would share, and well, first I would listen to the side of the leaders first. I just believe that's the wisest thing to do is to listen to their concerns. And if given permission by this burned out uh, minister of, over a church begin to share um, not fully disclosing you know intimate details of what this person is dealing with but helping them uh, to really understand that this is a crucial moment this is a crucial time that this person needs to take some time of rest whether it's a, a few weeks or a few months um, uh, to take a sabbatical in some denominations where I was blessed to get my to, I was blessed to get a Master of Divinity from Lutheran Theological Seminary in Gettysburg I noticed some of my professors they would take sabbatical um, once a year um, for for a semester and sometimes I truly believe that a sabbaticals are needed 
for pastors and churches. They need to take uh, sometimes, uh, whether it's a couple weeks to a month, away um, just to just be away from pastoring, leading, teaching, preaching, just to uh, rejuvenate, just to grow, just to read again, to rest their minds. Because I have seen so many pastors, Dr. Deshaun, pass away because they, ne they never took a break. They never took time away. Um, they gave their all to a church. And even people who didn't like them for whatever reasons, whether it was the teaching of the gospel, preaching, whatever it was, or decisions they made, and they ran themselves in the ground, of which one of these leaders um, was someone I worked closely with, an organization I belonged to ministerially. Um, she recently passed uh, within this last week. And because you're being everything to everyone else, and you're not taking time for yourself, and, and Dr. Deshaun, to fully answer your question, that's what I would do, sir. I would help the staff, those leaders within that congregation, fully understand that need. Even Christ himself took time away from people. Why should we not do the same? You know, it goes back to the adage, you know, who, who helps the helper? Yes, sir. You know, I think, uh, you know, churches, I, I do believe, are starting to come around a, a, a bit uh, in understanding the humanity of their church leaders, of their of their preachers, yes, sir. And, you know, and, you know, recognizing the need for, uh, in the same way, you know, church leaders at their secular employment have paid time off or yes. you know, vacation or holidays, and yes, um, you know, in fact, they have every weekend off, generally speaking, and that's yes. not necessarily the case uh, for uh, ministers. So, based on your research, and let me flip this just a little bit. Um, how, at what point, you know, I guess when I'm thinking about, okay, clergy burnout, uh, you know, to what extent is it the church's uh, responsibility to help the minister, or to what extent is it the minister's role in preventing burnout? Uh, I think we would all agree it's a both and, you know, yes. everyone has yes. some uh, responsibility, but uh, I guess, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, at what point um, is it fair um, to fire the preacher? Uh, I mean, oh. is there a point uh, what, as far as is that concerned? I mean, I guess what I'm saying is uh, at what point does, um, you know, I would venture to say every preacher that has been fired would say they were burned out. But uh, I guess what I'm saying is that it, is there a limit to, uh, to, the church's responsibility or, or I guess what I'm trying to say is that I'm not coming out very clear here but um, is it is firing a church leader ever warranted yes sir definitely especially um, if that leader uh, character and conduct is unbecoming of of a pastor or a clergy member or minister over a church uh, definitely first and foremost if they refuse to lead, even when others are not looking, uh, which is in the military, we call that integrity, which is doing what's right when no one else is looking. Um, right. Definitely, um, if their integrity is, is subpar and they have been warned a number of times and uh, you know a staff needs to come together or leadership over a certain denomination, um, that they need to hold that person accountable um, of course, there should have been some progressive um, measures in terms of discipline that, uh, that should have taken place, whether it's documented or they have to take some time away at something, get some counseling, and, and if those things did not help that individual, um, then they need to be dismissed, absolutely. But uh, yes, sir, uh, a pastor can, and I have seen this, and, and, and unfortunately as a pastor, I've had to fire uh, some people because of substandard conduct and leadership over a church. Um, even in the military, I had to do the same, to do the budget cuts and to let some people go. Had to do those things too. And those ones burned me out. I have questioned my own call. I've questioned myself as a leader. Um, but, oh, but these decisions, Dr. Deshaun, take place over a process of time. Um, of course, um, after an investigation has, has been done and, and conducted and those findings um, that have uh, been discovered and they've been presented to us, then we have to take the necessary, um, you know, 
we, we you know um, we must make the necessary decisions to uh, uh, I'm just thinking person. about uh, as you go forward you know and this is just a thought um, you know one of the things you potentially uh, would uh, be able to do very well with you know in the idea of, of selling your uh, your potential services you know you can go before a church and, and share with them your research and the importance of the overall health and well-being of ministers and and maybe churches can budget uh, for you to provide, um, you know, some uh, some life coaching, some counseling, some mentorship on uh, two preachers, and the church would fund it, and the preacher would benefit uh, from it, and it, it would be a, a win-win uh, for all. And, and maybe, you know, also, you know, marketing some toward, uh, you know, local, uh, you know, pastors, church leaders, uh, as uh, as a as a mentor, as a coach uh, type thing. Um, you know, I, I really, I, I really, what I'm trying to say is I hope uh, moving forward that this, re I know you want to <laughs> take a break and breathe a little bit. I would too after two doctoral programs. Uh, but I, I do hope you allow what you've learned in this process uh, to motivate you and guide you uh, as you uh, as you move forward. I'm almost done, uh, Dr. McCurdy. I just, uh, there's a couple other things just very logistically. Yes. Um, and this might just be my own OCD. I, I would definitely encourage you to read through a document, um, you know, a few more times over. Yes, sir. Uh, be consistent. I, I know there's sometimes where the word pastor is capitalized. Other times it's lowercase. I, right. I noticed that most recently in Chapter 5 on the research questions, okay. uh, research question 1 and 2 had in your manuscript has lowercase p. Uh, research question number 3 has uh, capital P. Or I may have said that backwards. Uh, two of them are one way, one of them is the other. I see. Uh, just be uh, consistent throughout. Uh, also, uh, in chapter five, the second to last paragraph, uh, before the conclusions, uh, they, they, you use a phrase in there, the researcher felt. Uh, oh, I, I see. I, I don't know. I, I think you may want to try to reword that a little bit. I see. Uh, just, yes, sir. Uh, as far as the uh, researcher feelings. Uh, but, uh, and on the acknowledgments, and I know the acknowledgments section is different, is a different feel. It's more personal. It's uh, less formal. Um, but I, you know, I, I, when I read the acknowledgments section, and I'm just talking out loud here, uh, you know, my first uh, response was, man, this guy has been burned out. And mm -hmm. um, that may very well have been the case. Uh, and I'm glad you got through it. But I, I'm just thinking, yes, you sir. know, uh, if there's uh, just floating an idea uh, just to maybe consider making that a, a bit more of a positive vibe definitely that accounts, it, it just seemed like um, you know at one point uh, anyway I, that's all I wanted to say uh, on that but um, thank you and yes. <laughs> I keep saying last thing uh, in the title there is uh, there are two colons I don't know if that's uh, something you want to look at uh i, I know it's uh I'm about to say that. Uh, colon and then uh, a kick colon case study uh, so you may want to look at that a little bit as well but okay uh, great job thomas i uh have definitely enjoyed working with you yes sir and thank you to dr gann and also of course to your chair dr mccurdy for all that she's done as well but uh i'm satisfied with your work and i'm pleased with it and I want to I commend you for arriving to this moment. Thank you, sir. All right, that's all I have, Dr. McCurdy. Thank you, Dr. Sean, and I appreciate you, and I was actually thinking the very first time that we have met. Um, and I really appreciate you and your expertise and your knowledge as well. As I mentioned, as you know, this is my uh, first time just going through this process, so anything that is beneficial, that is helpful, in regard to Thomas, I'm also taking it in as well, you know, to be beneficial for me. So, no, I thank you for all of your insights, all of your knowledge, but not just knowledge, your wisdom as well. Because even when we look at clergy burnout, just as burnout in general, those of us that have that drive, that love, and that passion, what we do is not just an 8 to 5, it is 24 7. So, even mm -hmm. clergy and ministry um, counseling is almost to me like a 24 7 job. 24 hours, 7 days a week, there is no break. But a break is needed, and it must be taken because it's not just, I would say, physically, but it's mentally, spiritually, and also emotionally exhausting uh, as well on the person. Definitely. 
I'll jump in real fast. I've got one question for you, Thomas, is what I asked everyone. Yeah, back again. Um, in a dissertation, you worked extra hard. My, my comments in terms of changes were the same as Dr. Deshaun. Okay. On that title, I would just delete clergy burnout colon. I just delete those things and just start with an investigation. Perfect. Um, right got there. It. I think I make it clearer. Yes, ma'am. You might hear a baby in the background. But my uh, question to you is, as you it. look at your results, what surprised you? What is something, because I know you had experience, you have, you have two doctorates, you know, you've done lots of experience and research, but as you look at your results and your conclusions, what did you think, oh, wow, I learned something new, or, or maybe, wow, that really surprised me that they went through this and mm -hmm. they said this. What was new and surprising to you? Because I know a lot of times research, especially as many degrees as you have it, as much experience as you have, it almost just confirms what you already know. Mm. So my question is, what was something new for you in this project that you've been working on for so long, you know, that you kind of gained from it, if that makes sense? Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gann. Um, that excellent question, all of these. You know, I've learned what surprised me the most as I learned from each of the uh, pastors that I spent some time with. Um, the results showed me that each, um, not only personally, but ministerially, deal with burnout. Um, and to me, having served as a senior pastor, as an associate, as, as a, you know, assistant, and, you know, as a youth at one point, forgetting, it's as though I once forgot some of those pressures that I once dealt with in different echelons, or some would equate them as lower echelons of ministry uh, within a church setting. But each uh, pastor who participated in my study dealt with levels of burnout that I would have never imagined um, and and some of which I've never dealt with and so they some deal with not only personal but psychological mental and and some of these really surprised me one unfortunately uh, considered suicide of which they were very close to completing that and not knowing that they cried out for help so much. Um, that it really, I, I felt the feelings from these people. I, I could feel uh, what they were dealing with. But from an academic standpoint, what stood out to me is that they each have endured levels of burnout that they couldn't measure their own selves unless they got the help, unless they took the time away to you know, just refocus to, to get their thoughts to grow, um, to even um, take a sabbatical if need be. Um, some were forced to take some time away. And that was surprising because each gave their lives, or have given their lives rather, to this calling. This has been a calling for them, and they know that their call is not just a profession, but it's a call. And yes, it, it affects us all across the board, whether ministry or not. But this this is what surprised me, is that each of the participants dealt with levels of burnout that were insurmountable for them. And had they not sought the help or took the time to grow and to even get away as needed, they may have collapsed or may have left and out of here, which one did. And so uh, thank you. Uh, for that question. Yeah, excellent, excellent answer. And I will say, you know, I've worked with you, I know, and Dr. McCurdy worked with you a lot on yes. reframing how you wrote this. And I will say something that really came out, and I think I made this comment in the last draft, is you captured the voices of these participants very well um, as you wrote and, and kind of shifted into that case study and, and got to dig deeper, yes. like Dr. Bishon commented. And so when you tell me, you know, you could feel their feelings, you did a great job communicating that in your writing, um, so I commend you um, for that effort. I know it took a lot of effort, you know, probably some frustration to rewrite and things, but I think what you have written here has much better captured these yes, um, participants. I think you know that um, yes, as well at this point. Definitely. I okay. want to thank you for helping me with that and help me capture the essence of this. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome. You worked hard, so it's good to be at this point. Yes, ma'am. Thank you.
Well, committee, are there any um, more questions before I ask Thomas uh, to leave the room, as they say? Is so there anything else? Okay, Dr. Gann, are you good? Um, I'm good. I've heard what I need to hear. Well, Thomas, are you good? Thank you. You all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. you as well. <laughs>